Hey guys, let's start something new now. This particular section is about sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now, what is a sampling distribution of the sample mean? It is no different than it was for the proportion. We have to have an SRS coming from a population with the sample mean this time, where we have the mu equaling the sample, equaling the, the population mean, and the standard deviation being sigma. So the bottom line is that we're getting a bunch of these samples coming from a population. And here is the mean popula here's the mean um, of the population, and here's the standard deviation of the population. But you know, just like with the proportions, we had a different formula. And here they are. We know that as I slide down, when we have the 10% condition right here that if we have a large enough sample size the mean of the sample is going to equal that of the population. We also now we see a new formula and with our new formula right here we see that the standard deviation of that sample is going to be affected by our sample size. So it's going to be the square root of our population divided by that of the um, sample size, of course. Now, with all of that being said, we know that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population, so we can use your sample means to represent that of the population. And we also know that the value of X bar are less spread out when you have a large sample size, when large sample size is given. Also, the standard deviation now, here we go, is something new. The standard deviation is now decreased by a square root of n. Look at that formula right there. And your thoughts should be, well, Ms. Sherbro, I don't remember before us having to worry about that sample size. But honestly, it's consistent because everything we did in Chapter 2, n was equal to 1. You just didn't know it. We said a person, a car, a school. So it's just like taking the square root of 1 here because your sample size was at that time only one. But now things are different. And with that being said, here we now we have to use the standard deviation right here of sigma divided by the square root of n. And of course the bottom line is when the 10% rule is applicable when we have a large enough sample size. Now let's just jump into a problem. So go to the notes that I gave you, problem number 50. Go ahead and pause and highlight the key information. Now as you look at the information here, you see you have a population mean of 40.12 millimeters with the standard deviation to be 0 .002 and a random sample of only four axles that have been um, collected. That's kind of weak, which means how can I use this data if this is so small? We're going to have to make a certain assumption. We are going to have to assume that this sample of four is coming from a normal population. Because if that is true, any samples that come from a normal population will also be considered normal. And tomorrow we're going to be working on that so you can see, well, how exactly is that possible? Considering there's a sample size of four, I get it. It's so small. But with this assumption, okay, that means that we can continue on and look at here at the, the mean that they gave us is equal to the mean of the sample size, which is the 40.12. Again, assuming that all axles that are 
produced is going to be greater than or 10 times 4. Now, that's a reasonable assumption, let's face it. That it comes from a normal um, population. They should have given us something. But that's the only way we can make this work. Next, with that being true, that means I can also find my standard deviation. Now, they want me to, they're asking, all they're asking me for is the mean and the standard deviation, so I've got it. Next question. So now I want to go to problem number 54. Please take a moment to read over that. Because now they're going to ask us to do something, find the probability of something. So go ahead and pause. So as we gather some information right here, they tell us, thank you, that it's normally distributed. We have a mean of 48 and a standard deviation. Our sigma is, point, is um, 8.2. We have an SRS of 8 cars. Well, at least they told us it's normally distributed, so we can go with that. Okay, and next we're asking for to determine if it is um, to describe the sampling distribution and then ev eventually find the probability that the sample mean is going to be 42.2 um, months or less in this lifetime distribution. And we want to see if it's changed at all. Okay, so as I look at the 10% rule, because remember, we got to see is the sample size going to be okay. Okay, so all batteries cannot be, well, will have to definitely be greater than or equal to 10 times the 8 that we chose. And if that's the case, we know that the, the mean of the sample is going to equal the mean of the population, which is the 48 months. That's the lifetime. Okay, considering this condition right here, we can also establish, well, now I can find the standard deviation with our new formula. Next, what exactly are we looking for? It's stated it right here. We are looking for where the mean of the sample distribution that they had was going to be less than or equal to 42.2 months. So... That means I want to try to use the z-score. And in order to use the z-score, I need to put in my um, n times p, n times p naught. Oopsie, I'm so wrong. Because here, are there any proportions at all? No, there aren't. So for those of you who are thinking that, yes, I did make that mistake on purpose. Okay. If there's no p, how exactly are we going to be able to use that formula? So if you notice in my notes, it's not here. Okay, so we do have enough to establish it is normally distributed because, first of all, they told us that we can just jump into the z-score formula. So and as we jump into the z-score formula, here we have, just plug it in. Remember, right here is your mu. That is your 48 months right there. Here is your z, and here is the, the probability. Also, here's your calculator. I didn't do the calculator on the previous problem because I just didn't have enough room. Sorry. Please recognize here's our bell. And I'll be honest, I didn't do the bell on the other one, and I just had no, I literally forgot. I should have. That was just an oopsie. And then after I've done all of that, now I can answer the question. So there is a a 2.28% or that percent if you use the, the calculator probability that the sample mean lifetime is 42 then cut off of me again Ugh. so I know I'm being redundant and I apologize at least I think I am okay so this is a really small p-value like I said so regardless of which one you did it will still be accurate so there is a that 2.28% um, probability that the sample mean lifetime is going to be 42.2 months. Now, which is such a small p-value, remember I said how the p-value 
is that probability value. There's convincing evidence that the lifetime distribution has changed. And I know your thoughts might be, well, why do we have to say it like that, Ms. Sharbo? We have to say it like that because we're about to get into hypothesis testing. And that's what hypothesis testing is all about. Is there convincing evidence to suggest one way or the other that something is accurate? So now we have, there's the complete problem. And I will see you guys tomorrow so that we can work on more problems together. Have a good day. Or good evening. Bye-bye.